Welcome to the Christian Church on this first day of the week, October the 11th, 2015. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his tender mercy and his loving kindness to allow me the opportunity to preach the gospel once again. I just thank God that he's bringing us along. There's been tough times for a lot of people I know and some trying times for myself. But God is faithful to bring us through. Amen. Whatever it is we go through, the key is going through, not staying stuck in. You understand? Going through means I'm, I'm, I'm proceeding and moving forward through whatever trial or circumstance that comes my way. And it is only with the help of the Lord that you can make it because the Bible says Jesus said in his word, without me, you can do nothing. And so today we just come off of a wonderful time in which we celebrated Christ's birth last month. And we did it in a way that I believe is honorable as we talked about many times before, how we showed the significance and acknowledging the fact that Jesus was born and what a big deal it was in Israel. Now we're moving into the uh, month that on our calendar is known as October. And you know that in October there is a lot of devilish activity going on because this is the time of the year where Satanists really increase their terror because they do things in honor of their highest holiday, Halloween, which takes place at the end of this month. But we say, as God's people, that October the 31st belongs to the Lord, and it is not Halloween or any other day. It is simply the day that the Lord has made, and we need to be giving honor unto God and doing things that are honorable to God, such as praying against all these wicked spirits out here that even cause church folks to dress up as somebody that they're not. You understand? All of this stuff is combined in the midst of paganism, we talked about how Christmas is associated with paganism. So you're in, you're in a time of year where a whole lot of paganism is going on. You understand? And as a person that loves the Lord, the Bible tells us not to be connected or conform to this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But if we're stuck in the same old traditions, which biblically, if you look at the scripture, and you see what God punished Israel for, what makes you think the church is going to get away with it? If God punished Israel for committing the abominations that are associated with the celebration of these two holidays that I brought up, which have nothing to do with Jesus Christ at all, even though one of them claims to have his name in it. And we already broke that down, but now we're moving into really seriously seeing how God will turn a nation that turns its back on him over into their own mess, and then he will punish them. See, it is time that we repent of our sins and acknowledge the truth of who God is and the fact that his word is absolutely true. There is nothing wrong, no error or flaw in his word. That's why it's very important that if you have a Bible, you have the translation that best expresses the fullness of who God wants us to be. And that translation happens to be in the English language, and it happens to be a Bible known as the King James Bible. But it is not authored by King James. It was simply an authorized text that was given as an authorized translation of the Bible. And it was put with a king's inscription, but the scripture is inspired by God. You understand what I'm saying? Spelling and grammatical errors are not the same as scriptural error where a verse is saying something it shouldn't say. That's a whole totally different 
realm when you get into that and some people can't decipher the, the difference between the two just because the apocrypha was put in it's been taken out it has nothing to do with the authenticity of the truth of canonized scripture you understand what i'm saying and we must live according to the truth of the canonized scripture and if it's been altered or changed then you're going to get a perversion of what you're believing you understand? So it's very important that you have a Bible that has the scripture properly intact. And if there are minor little differences, those things can be easily fixed. But that is not the same as a Bible taking verses out of the Bible or a Bible changing words that totally changes the meaning of a scripture. The Bible forbids that we are not to add to or take away from the word of God because if you do, there is a judgment associated of, with both of them according to Revelation 22 verse 18. But today we're going to come from the book of Isaiah because it's quite ironic that how God dealt with his people that some of these same problems exist today as we talked about with the celebration of things that tie into blood sacrifice such as Halloween and Christmas both babies were slaughtered do you understand during the Yule time where people worship the false god Yule which is spelled J-U-L which the month of July is named after a lot of people don't even know stuff like that has occurred, but I assure you it has occurred, and I assure you God doesn't wink at it. God sees it all for what it is, because the Bible says that all things are open and naked under the one who created everything. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you got to understand that God is not deceived or mocked in any way, that whatever people are sowing, they're going to reap. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 8. We can read some of this, but there are certain parts of this chapter that I'm going to get into that are going to be the basis of a lot of what's going to be talked about. But before I get into that, I will pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, may your spirit help me to preach your word and communicate the message, Lord, that you want to be communicated to this world, whether they be in this room or whether they be over the airwaves, over the phone, or on the computer when we post it, I pray that your spirit will speak to those who have an ear to hear what the spirit has to say unto the churches and that people will respond to the truth in the proper way because we know that the only way we can be free is to come to the acknowledging of the truth. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make ye free. That is what you said in your word to us. And I pray that the truth of your word will be communicated from one of your servants in a way that is humble and in a way that is precise. And I ask you to cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness that I may be able to pour a clean word upon the people whom I am preaching to. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 8, beginning at verse 1, says, Moreover the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll, and write in it with a man's pen, concerning Mahershal Hashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record, Uriah the priest, and Zechariah the son of Jeberechiah. I do the best I can to pronounce those things, those words. Do you understand that God told Isaiah to write this with the pen of a man's hand? So it's very important to understand that Isaiah is not writing what Isaiah wants to write. You understand what I'm saying? He is writing what God has instructed him to do, and it took faithful witnesses to write this. So don't let anybody try to attack the Bible that has the true scripture in it, because people have a way of trying to attack that which is true so that they can sell you on a lie. You understand? Satan did it in the Garden of Eden when he attacked Eve in the garden and said, May you eat of all the trees of the garden. He already knew that God commanded Adam not to eat of the tree in the midst of the garden, which was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
But Satan came subtly to the wife of the man and deceived her because she was looking at that tree with lust in her heart to eat after it. You understand? That's why Satan was able to get a foothold. When you have something in your heart that is not right and you do not deal with it, you give the devil a legal right to run, to wreak havoc in your life. Do you understand? Because God gave all of us free will. God doesn't force you to serve him. So if you want to entertain something in your heart that you shouldn't, you are going to open up a door for the devil to come in and destroy your life. And that's exactly what he will do. If you open a door, he will kick it in. And eventually you end up losing your soul. Because you allowed the devil to come in instead of paying attention to the truth of the word. This is how we break negative patterns and negative thought patterns and stereotypes. When we allow the word of God and what the truth of God's word says to take shape in our mind. Then our mind becomes renewed and we start seeing things the way God wants us to see it. Not the way our human fleshly heart and mind wants to see it. Because our flesh will deceive us every time you understand and so god is telling isaiah to take faithful witnesses to record exactly what god wants to say because if you pervert or twist the word you can lead a whole nation a whole world astray a whole group of people such as the catholic church have been led astray by the false teachings and perversions of the word of god that they present to the people and so they're following after something which will destroy them if they do not repent of. You understand? This is the difference between having a legitimate ministry in which you are teaching and preaching the truth of God to someone having a cult that is leading people astray. There are more cults that call themselves Christianity than there are out here and the world. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because counterfeit Christianity is even more dangerous than the witchcraft that's going on in New Orleans or Haiti. You understand what I'm saying? It's a very, very serious matter. Let's get to the next verse, verse 3. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Mahershal Hashbaz. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My father and my mother, it says the riches of Damascus and the spool of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Do you understand God is saying, that before this child has the ability to say mama and dada, you understand that something was going to happen. The spoil and the riches of these countries was going to be taken. And you know why this happened? Because of disobedience. It was because they disobeyed God that God had to send a stern reminder that they need to be focused on him and not focused on other gods. And that's what we are, we are battling now. There are counterfeit Jesuses that are being preached out here. And then there's the real Jesus that died for your sins and rose from the dead. And you had better learn the difference between the two and ask God for discernment. Because you could be sitting in a church and be lost. Listening to false teaching, shouting and saying hallelujah and people speaking in unknown languages or whatever they're doing. And then they still be lost because they have gone after something that has turned them away from the truth which makes the real legitimate people who are worshiping God that are praising God for real those that have been given the utterance of the spirit to speak is causing them to be ignored or to be blasphemed you understand and the name of God is being blasphemed because there are so many Im imitations out here so many people are claiming they love Jesus and then going out and practicing the very things that will destroy them. And I can get into so many things, so many sins, alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, tobacco, fornication, marijuana, heroin, 
crack cocaine, all of these things destroy the soul, adultery, homosexuality, all these things are things that will destroy you. But just as fast as these sins will destroy you, the sins of pride and arrogance and refusing to hear the truth because somebody else is whispering something else in your ear. See, we have to, to understand that what the Bible says, it is for our learning and it is for our eternal benefit if we would take heed. Verse 5 says, The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh that go softly and rejoice in reason and rebellious sign. Now therefore behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks, and he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of the wings shall fill the breath of the land, O Emmanuel. God is telling you that the king of Assyria, he's going to use them to come in like a mighty river. You understand? And they're just going to sweep through and take whatever they want. This is not God's will. But sin calls this response from God. When we sin against God, we cause a, a response where God allows the enemy to come in and destroy us because we will not put our confidence and trust solely in the Most High God. Do you understand that? Do you understand that it is very important that when you hear God's word that you harden not your heart? When you stand against sin, God will give you the power to endure because the Bible lets us know that he doesn't put any more temptation on us than we are able to handle Without his power, you understand, we can't handle anything. But with his power, we can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengtheneth us. You understand? So it's important that when you turn away from sin, God gives you the power to stay away from it. Your flesh might still want it, but you have to crucify your flesh. And I'm not talking about killing yourself. I'm talking about crucifying those desires within you to disobey the will and the word of God. Because when you want to do something, you'll start looking in the Bible for a loophole to try to justify yourself. And what's going to happen is when you stand before God, all your guilt and shame is going to come before your face. And you're going to be lost because your own heart will condemn you. Because you can't, you can't fool your heart, do you understand? But your heart can deceive you. So you got to be very careful of this deceitful and desperate wicked heart of ours. Only the Lord's power and the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse our heart from all filthiness and all unrighteousness. Verse 9 says, Associate yourselves, all ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear, all ye of far countries, gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. God said it twice. Take counsel together, mm -hmm. and it shall come to naught. Mm -hmm. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. God is basically telling them that no weapon formed against his people are going to prosper. All these people are going to counsel and plot and plan to try to destroy his people. And if you're obedient to God, the Bible says it shall come to naught. Whether it was the children of Israel or the church of Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. The church of Jesus Christ is not the nation of Israel. God has a plan for the nation of Israel and God has a plan for the church of Jesus Christ. And now that Jesus has come, he's commanding everybody to repent. Not just the Jews, but Gentiles alike. If you come under the umbrella of salvation, 
doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, God's going to bless you, you understand? And the new covenant has even greater promises than the old. But still, people still want their sin more than they want to live right for God. It's not going to last. You can speak against the truth, but you will not stand against it. Verse 11, for the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and outstretched.